Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be taking a look at sound design. We've said it before in a couple different videos, but audio is kind of the most underrated element to a really great video. That video that you just saw had a lot of different sound effects and foley and other elements scattered throughout. So let's take a quick look at the video again, except this time with all of those sound effect elements removed. And if you just want to skip this part, you can go to this time code right here. is that it's okay, but it's nothing compared to what it was originally. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can use those kind of sound effects to really enhance your video. So let's get right into it. And if you're wanting to check out how you can get some of those speed ramping effects we showcased, you can check out this video here and I'll link to it in the description below. Okay, so let's start it off at the beginning. Why? Why do you even want to invest in good sound effects and sound design? Well, I'm kind of hoping that the before and after showed you exactly why. Video isn't just a visual experience, it's also auditory. If you think of how many different facets are put into the visual elements of a video, your base footage, color correction, visual effects, etc. Everything that you're doing to the visuals is done to create either a feeling or to convey information to the maximum possible effectiveness. That same depth and care that you put into your visuals should be present in your audio as well. Not only does it make your video feel even more professional, it can also help to convey new information or existing information just a little bit better. So that's the why out of the way. Now let's get to the how. Capturing your sound. Once you got your visuals down and you want to enhance them with some sound effects, it's time to break out your microphone and actually start recording. It's always best to have a directional microphone when you're working with things like sound effects and Foley. And for us, we have a shotgun microphone, which basically captures sound only in the direction that it's pointed. And it will exclude sounds that it's pointed away from. I've got the Rode NTG2, but really you can just use whatever you have at your disposal. If you're looking for a place to start, good industry standards are the Sennheiser MKE 600 and the ME66. I don't bring these up because I think that you should have them, but just to keep your eye out for them because if you ever go to a rental house, these will likely be in stock. And you can probably get your hands on one for as low as 10 to $15 a day. If you're doing a paid gig, that's a really small price to pay for some really enhanced audio. You're also going to need something to plug it into for recording. For me, I have this one plugged into a Scarlett 2i2, which is plugged into my computer, letting me record from there. But if you're looking for something to have out in the field, then pretty much the indie king is Zoom. The Zoom H4n has been around for a long time, and like the Sennheiser microphones I talked about before, you can probably get your hands on one to rent for under $10 a day. Okay, so now we're actually ready to record. Let's go over a quick example. Here I have a bunch of coffee beans getting poured into a grinder and the grinder looks kind of plastic. So I'm literally just gonna grab coffee beans and a plastic cup. Test your microphone to make sure that it's recording, and then go through the motion that you need in order to actually make that sound. Make the sound within relatively close proximity to the microphone, and then go through a couple of different motions, testing out different ways to get slightly different sounds. Wearing a good pair of headphones can also probably help you to make sure that you're actually getting the sound that you want. Even if you think you've gotten a good take, do it over a couple more times just for variation. Then drop it over top of your footage and see what it sounds like. Cool, now it's time to find other elements that you can use to make your sound effects. So once you've gotten a bunch of sounds that you're happy with, you're probably gonna realize, oh, there's a bunch of sounds that I don't know how to make the sounds for. Like take for example this one, roots diving down into the ground. You can't just point your microphone into the dirt and get that sound. So what do you do? The answer is get creative. You wanna know how I made that sound? Saran wrap. I took a piece of this and for about two minutes solid, just tried to find all the different sounds I could make using it. 
This will require a lot of trial and error. And it's really likely that the first thing you choose to try and make this creative sound won't actually work. I thought at first, oh, for sure a pair of rubber gloves is gonna get me that stretching, squeaking sound that I'm looking for. But after trying them out, it's like they don't actually make that sound. Who knew? But here's the thing. I didn't just use the one sound from the saran wrap. I actually used three. And when all three are placed together, you get this. A fuller, richer sound. This is what's called layering sounds. When you're getting not only one version of the sound that you're going for, but multiples stacked on top of each other. What can really help is to make each of these play a unique role. I had one focus on the high frequencies here. And then for another one, I focused on the low end of the audio by adding a simple low pass filter. But layering sounds doesn't just have to be stacking the same kinds of sounds on top of each other. You can use different kinds of sounds to create a fuller world. Take the opening forest sounds, for example. You've got the general forest ambience, and then you've got birds layered on top of them. But once you've got a few more sounds layered on top of each other, you get something more like this. But even if you travel to the farthest ends of the globe, capturing different kinds of sounds, or you're a pack rat and you have literally every kind of object that can make any kind of sound, you're still gonna run into situations where you don't know how to create that sound. Take these shots. How would you create sounds for space? I thought it was literally supposed to be a silent vacuum of emptiness. Well, you might have noticed that in the video, there's a moment where you can actually hear Neil Armstrong's first words after stepping foot on the moon. That's one small step for man. That recording is actually in the public domain, meaning that you can use it for really whatever purpose without any copyright restrictions. There's actually a lot of material created by NASA in specific that's just in the public domain, ready for you to use. But after you've scoured the internet, searched through your whole house, and you still can't find the thing to make that sound, this is where we turn to modulation. Here's a shot of the moon descending over the horizon. And here's the sound effect that I made go along with that. Ready for this one? You know what I did? I made a humming noise with my mouth. Hmm. 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 From there, you can take your noise, and if you're in Premiere Pro, you can just add a studio reverb. Tweak some settings here to give it a big amount of reverb, and then you go from this, hmm. to this, hmm. and then slow down the speed of your sound to finally get this. Sometimes the greatest solutions are just playing around with things and seeing what happens. Like for example, what happens when we play the sound we just made in reverse? I think I know where we can put that sound. And in context, it sounds like this. When you create a sound effect yourself and it just works within your larger video, it really feels good. But guys, there's a chance that even with your highest degree of creativity, you're still not gonna be able to get some of the sounds that you're looking for. Maybe they're really specific and you just don't have access to some of the places, sounds, or things that you would need in order to actually make them. If that's the case, then you can always go to motionarray.com and grab some sound effects to help boost your piece. And keep in mind that when you download sound effects, you're not limited to just using them as they were originally recorded. I grabbed these church bell sounds here, and I used the pitch shifter audio effect in Premiere Pro to make the tones line up a little bit more so that they almost sounded like a part of the song. But if you open up the audio effects panel in Premiere, you can see that there's pretty much no shortage of things that you can throw at your sound effects that you've downloaded to make them truly your own. And if you have the full Creative Cloud suite, you can even open up Audition for truly unparalleled audio capabilities. But guys, that's it for me here. I really hope that you liked the video and like you feel like you can take on another layer of video production with confidence. If you like this video, we've got tons more here at motionarray.com. I hope to see you next time. Thank you.